I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Americans comedian Kurt Metzger and the miserable liberal Steph Zamorano. <laughs> and our guest is Max Blumenthal, editor of The Gray Zone, thegrayzone.com. And remember this headline recently from Seymour Hirsch, how America t- took out the Nord Stream pipeline? Well, this headline was greeted with resounding corporate media silence. Uh, the New York Times, Washington Post have totally ignored this story. But finally, we got a question put to a White House official from Fox News. And John Kirby, who's a White House spokesperson, was on Fox News Sunday. And he was asked about Cy Hirsch's story. Okay, I want to ask you, uh, too, the administration has been clear in its denials that there was any U.S. involvement in the Nord Stream pipelines. Seymour Hirsch has this long piece out saying he's citing a single anonymous source who talks about what was going on and what he led to, uh, what he claims led to us being involved in that. He says prior to Putin's invasion of Ukraine back in December, a working group was put together, and he says this. Um, what became clear to the participants, according to the source with direct knowledge of the process, is that Sullivan, meaning Jake Sullivan, intended for the group to come up with a plan for the destruction of the two Nord Stream pipelines and that he was delivering on the desires of the president. Hirsch points back to the president saying this in February of last year with the German chancellor. There will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. We will... Uh, I promise you we'll be able to do it. Can you say unequivocally the U.S., no U.S. proxy, no one connected to the U.S. had anything to do? I mean, is the Seymour Hirsch complete fabrication, that article? It's a completely false story. There is no truth to it, Ah. Shannon, not a shred of it. It is not true. The United States and no proxies from the United States had anything to do with it. I love how he admits that the U.S. has proxies. He says no proxy of the United States did, did it. That's an admission that you do have proxies. Like What were example. they doing? You couldn't get them to do it? Who? <laughs> Nothing. If the U.S. were to undertake some mission like that, would the administration have an obligation to inform Congress in we, advance? We, we did not take... Uh, any such operation, Shannon. And obviously, we keep Congress informed appropriately of of things, both classified and unclassified. But I can tell you now, regardless of the notification process, there was no U.S. involvement in this. None. Zero. It's completely false. Admiral, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining. Well, he's going way past O.J. Simpson, if I did it, into Willie Nelson getting caught cheating territory. (laughs) Who are you going to believe, baby? Me or your own eyes? (laughs) Well, you know, a good rebuttal to his claim that, of course, we are under congressional oversight. We never evade Congress. A good rebuttal to that is some previous reporting from Seymour Hirsch, because Seymour Hirsch has previously reported the ways in which the U.S. evaded congressional oversight. And it was revealed in this article back in 2014 in a legendary article called The Red Line and the Rat Line. And the story was about how the U.S., the, under the Obama administration, made a deal with Turkey, along with Saudi Arabia and Qatar, to basically ship weapons from Libya after the successful regime change operation that Obama undertook in Libya, to ship weapons looted from Libya over to Syria to arm the sectarian death squads that the U.S. was backing to try to overthrow the government of Bashar al-Assad. And Cy Hirsch revealed this about the CIA program known as Timber Sycamore, and the rat line, as they were called it, uh, running weapons from Libya to Syria. This is what Cy Hirsch reported. He said a secret agreement was reached in early 2012 between the Obama and Erdogan administration, Erdogan, the leader of Turkey. It pertained to the rat line. The CIA, with, with the support of MI6, that's British intelligence, was responsible for getting arms from Gaddafi's arsenals into Syria. The operation had not been disclosed at the time it was set up to the Congressional Intelligence Committees and the Congressional leadership, as required by law since the 1970s. And here's how they got around that. Cyher says, the involvement of MI6 enabled the CIA to evade the law by classifying the mission as a liaison operation. So basically, you outsource this formally to the MI6, and that means this. Here's more from Hirsch. The former intelligence official, who Cy Hirsch is using as a source here, explained that for years there had been a recognized exception in the law that permits the CIA not to report liaison activity to Congress, which would otherwise be owed a finding. And a finding is if you're the president and you want to engage in a covert activity like, for example, arming an al-Qaeda-dominated insurgency in Syria – with weapons you're shipping over from Libya, then you have to write up a finding in which that's then presented to congressional leaders for approval. So the way around that was to basically formally outsource this to the MI6. And in Cy Hirsch's article about the Nord Stream 2, he talks about a similar scheme that was undertaken to avoid congressional oversight. So there's a precedent 
uh, for the U.S., including this camp itself, because the Obama administration is staffed by many of the same people, the, the same principals, Antony Blinken, uh, Jake Sullivan, Victoria Nuland, and of course, Biden himself. And that's how Cy Hirsch says they got around congressional oversight today by doing something similar. <laughs> and note how the person denying this is not one of these White House principals named in Cy Hirsch's story, not William Burns, not Victoria Nuland, not Jake Sullivan, not Antony Blinken. It's a spokesperson who was told what to say. And for all uh, you know, we know, he probably has no idea what the U.S. actually does covertly because that's not his job. His job is to speak to the public and tow the party line. So I'm curious about the fact that we still have yet to see any of these principles named in the story coming out in public, issuing a statement, or even being asked about this because Antony Blinken was all over cable news this this weekend, but nobody asked him about Cy Hirsch's story. So let's bring in Max Blumenthal of The Gray Zone. Max, what do you uh, make of all this? Well, I think you made the most important point, which is about John Kirby. He was former State Department spokesman under Obama, and he was doing the same thing about Syria that whole time. Um, I think it might have been him uh, who was asked if uh, he – it was either him or another State Department spokesman. I remember it was the most hilarious exchange. Some random reporter asked him during some briefing, are you happy – that Russia and Syria retook Deir ez-Zor from ISIS. Are you happy that ISIS was defeated in part of Syria? And it was, I'm pretty sure it was him. And he refused to answer the question. And he said, we, we, and he refused to say yes. Um, so it's, you know, he's, he's not going to, he's not going to be above board and he doesn't know what the administration thinks, but he also is fully committed to the project. I mean, this is someone who's so committed that he will also lie. Was he like um, a press secretary? <laughs> like, and there's very little. Yeah, exactly. So, and there's very little pressure coming. I mean, I mentioned uh, in a previous segment that there are very little questions being asked by Congress. No questions being asked by Congress. The only thing I can think of is J.D. Vance, the new Republican senator from Ohio, has tweeted out Cy Hirsch's article. So that's the closest we're getting to pressure on the administration to answer questions about this. We know, however... That Joe Biden said we will do it or we will take care of it when asked about Nord Stream. Basically, we'll take it out, which had implications for how the operation was conducted, whether it would be classified, Aaron, as a covert operation or as, as a secret operation. I mean, that's something Cy discussed in his article. But the point is, US officials were telegraphing their punches. They were talking about the need to take out the Nord Stream pipeline. And celebrating it afterwards, as Victoria Newland did in a um, Senate Foreign Relations hearing, she said, "We're happy to see it at the uh, as a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea." Condi Rice previously called, effectively called for taking it out back in 2014 when it was still a Nord Stream Two was just a blueprint. So why why weren't um, why wasn't the media asking questions even before Cy Hirsch's article came out? Radislav Sikorsky, um, head of the EU's um, EU-US partnership organization, or friendship organization, who happens to be married to Ann Op- Applebaum, a prominent neoconservative Washington Post columnist who's a close buddy of Hillary Clinton. He openly took to Twitter to celebrate the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline the day of. He said, thank you, America. I mean, all the signs were there that this was a US operation and the media was never asking questions. So it's good they got to John Kirby, but to the extent that Biden makes himself available at all, Will anyone ask him? Because he's the man who apparently authorized it. And will he play the role of Ronald Reagan during Iran-Contra and just respond with, uh, well, I, I do not recall. I do not recall. Just this doddering old man who, who deflects responsibility from everyone, but particularly himself. I don't know if you remember, there's this great, uh, when Saturday Night Live used to be funny, there's a great sketch where Reagan does a press conference and they're bombarding him with questions about Iran-Contra. And he says, I do not recall. And then he goes back backstage with, uh, you know, Poindexter and Ali North is there and Casper Weinberger. And he's like, Ali, I need you to, to rake up, rake up the cash, sell some cocaine and get us the money. Uh, Poindexter, we need several operatives down in Guatemala and he's giving out orders. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of how this played out according to Sai's story. Like Biden gave the order to do this. So it, the buck stops with him. And the buck stops with people like Victoria Nuland, who just shortly before Cy Hirsch's story came out, publicly boasted about how Nord Stream 2 was a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. Yeah. 
Senator Victoria Cruz, Newland, I mean, uh, like you, I am. And I think the administration is very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. There it is. And, uh, you know, uh, as we're speaking shortly, Olaf Scholz, the chancellor of Germany, is going to be visiting Washington to meet with Biden. And the last time they held the a press conference together in D.C. was shortly before Russia's invasion. And that's when Biden, we played the clip before, promised that if Russia invades, the U.S., no matter what, will stop Nord Stream 2. So I can't wait to see the follow-up press conference to that and whether Olaf Scholz will raise this issue. Of course he won't uh, because he's been doing the U.S. bidding this entire time. But certainly the optics of that, of the German chancellor coming to visit right after this report that Biden blew up Germany's one of Germany's most important infrastructure projects, if not the most important. I think that will be very interesting to see. Max Blumenthal, final comments as we, as we wrap. Well, the simplest explanation is usually the true one. And we can listen to Victoria Newland's comments during an intercepted call that was leaked and publicized where she most uh, infamously discussed with then U.S. ambassador to Ukraine the U.S. plans for the Maidan coup in 2014, you know, uh, she was well, just helping them back. She was she just was talking about, out. yeah, just trying to help them out. But she you, was talking about which <laughs> will give Yats the attaboy, you know, Pat, because Yatsenyuk, the oligarch was going to be the president. Yeah. She's just deciding who's going to be president. And then, uh, what we'll, we'll keep Tianbach on the outside because he's the Sig Heiling Nazi. So, you know, even though we work with him, we'll keep him on the outside. And she was talking about, um, Vitaly Klitschko who is now mayor of Kiev. She's like, yeah, we'll have Klitsch isn't ready yet. Because he got too much CTE from boxing or something, she was basically calling him dumb. I had a friend and telling me that this is just her helping out, and you're taking it wrong. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you can that, see that, it that, I said, "Janata, I blew my stack of how stupid it was." <laughs> well, she definitely wasn't helping out the Europeans because the most relevant comment she made was when she said "f the EU," and that was in response right. to the EU being concerned about if this nationalist regime takes power in Ukraine and then breaks all ties with Russia, it would disrupt energy supplies from Russia and they could potentially have an energy crisis in Europe, which is precisely what took place in 2022. And so she said, who cares what they think? F the EU, we own them. I mean, just, and again, just look at that picture of, of Tony Blinken with his cold dead eyes and his, his soft hands around the shoulders of Annalena Baerbach, the German <laughs> foreign minister. And he's just smiling, this sociopathic smile, like a lobotomized werewolf. And she's just sitting there smiling too. And you know, the US destroyed Germany's critical infrastructure, carried out an act of war against Germany, and she's forced to smile. F the EU. So Victoria Newland has been behind this whole thing. It's just so obvious. And the U.S. media isn't asking questions of her. Congress isn't asking questions of her. They're not asking questions of Biden. This goes all the way to the top. This is one of the greatest crimes of our time. Max Blumenthal, editor of The Gray Zone, thegrayzone.com. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Doing live stand-up comedy in Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Nashville, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, and Hartford, Connecticut. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets and become a premium member. Get access to all our content.